Hello, this is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation Church. Welcome you once again to the program Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. So glad to be with you once again here as we're winding out of uh, the school year, just about wound out. And now here we are heading into the summer. Fourth of July is coming up. We're excited because, hey, it's warm out. That's a good thing. You know, a little bit of rain here and there, sometimes maybe even a little bit too hot. But thank God here in the church, we have air conditioning. We can celebrate God and still stay cool. And we get we get to celebrate sometime. That AC has to kick in. But you're invited to come and join us. See for yourself. We're looking forward to a great time in the Lord here at Destiny Preparation Church. As always, we're growing. We're reaching out right now to the community. We have some outreach things going on in the community. We're going to be in several parks here in the community and uh, also some of the apartment complexes. We're spreading out, reaching the people of God and excited about it. We're also getting excited about our youth conference. Our youth weekend is coming up in just a couple of weeks and we're looking forward to that. Have some guest speakers coming in. It's going to be a Saturday and Sunday event and our young people are going to be coming together. We're going to have a great time. You're invited. If you have any young people, teenagers, young adults, we invite you to come and be a part of it. We're going to have a great, great time here at Destiny Preparation Church. So we always got some things going on here and uh, looking forward to seeing what God is going to do. But we want you to be a part of it. Don't forget, join us this weekend at service at su on Sunday at 1130 a.m. And we have our midweek service. This week will be 4th of July, so we'll take a, uh, probably take a, a little break this midweek. But we will be here coming up again with our special services for Youth Weekend in just a couple of weeks. Stay tuned for more information on that. Now let me take you to the Word of God. I want to remind you again to stay with us uh, in the Word of God. I'm, I'm, I've been stuck, if you will, uh, on this theme of love. I haven't been able to fully escape from it. And so we're back at it again. I want to talk to you about full dimension. And I pray that this is going to bless you. Open your eyes to really see just how good and great God is to us. Grace and mercy come from God. And we really understand the extension, the extent of mercy and grace. Not only mercy, but grace on top of that. I'll talk about that a little bit. I think you'll find this to be something powerful for you to understand about how much God cares for you. Now, God bless you. Don't forget to connect up with us. Hope we'll see you here at Destiny real soon. God bless. Because God allows his mercy to cover what you messed up, which should have taken you to hell and then decides to bless you on top of it to make you his child. That's the extreme of God's love towards you that he shows you not only mercy, but also grace. The gap between these two extremes demonstrates, number one, the extremity of his love for us. He loves you that much. He could have just shown you mercy and left it, left it alone. All right, I'm not going to put you in hell, but I'm just going, you do, you're on your own now. You're going to have to do your own thing. He could have left us there, but it shows us the extremity of his love for us that he not only forgave us for what we did, but took us all the way into his house. It also shows us the unmerited or unearned favor that God has towards us. You didn't deserve it. You barely deserve to live. You barely deserve to keep walking. You barely deserve to even still be on the earth. You barely deserve the air that you're breathing right now. But yet his favor towards you did not just allow you to live, but he allowed you to prosper. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gap shows us how much we ought to appreciate what he's done for us. When you realize the extreme of what God has done for you, it's one thing if somebody just, you know, pats you on the back. It's one thing if somebody slips a $5 bill into your pocket. It's one thing if somebody, you know, just helps you start your car. But when you see the extremity of what God has done for you, God, not only did you bless me, but before you blessed me, you had to forgive me. Mm. Not only did you forgive me, but after you forgive me, you still raised me up. Listen, he didn't have to trust you ever again because you messed up the first time and somebody say and the second time and the third time and the fourth time amen how many times has God had to show his mercy towards you but not only did he just give you another chance he puts you at the head of the line if there's anybody that ought to have something to thank him for it's somebody who realizes that God has shown me not only mercy but he's shown me grace anybody here got a reason to praise God anybody realize what God has done for you today come on if you realize it come on somebody say Lord I thank you right now for your mercy and for your grace. Come on, praise him like he, he deserves something today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
Come on, some of us need to never stop thanking him. We need to thank him on the car on the way home. God, thank you for the grace of this car that I'm sitting in right now. Lord, I thank you because I'm driving to a home. I've got a place to park this and get on the inside. Thank you because I've got keys that I can open up my own house, Lord. Thank you for the bed I'm going to sleep in tonight. And when I open those cupboards, I believe there's food in that refrigerator. Lord, I thank you for the clothes that are on my back. Some of them I didn't even earn. I didn't even deserve it. But God, I thank you for grace. I wouldn't have had the job that I had if you had not given it to me. God, I didn't have to prosper. I didn't go through school like I should have. I didn't succeed like I should have. But somehow you still have taken me from the back of the line and put me in front. Thank you, God, for the extremity of your mercy and your grace in my life. Hallelujah. Listen, the more he's done for you, the more you ought to thank him. Hallelujah. I said, the more he's done for you. Come on, he may have helped somebody next to you, but if you know he, ha hallelujah, how good he's been to you. You ought to be shouting every other minute. You ought to be thanking God for another step. Somebody had legs that didn't want to work right, but thank you, God, because I'm healed today. Somebody had a body that was trying to fail them, but Lord God, thank you for health and strength in my body today. Hallelujah. The grace and the mercy of God. We thank him for it. I want to show you a story in the book of Matthew, chapter 18, which I believe describes a good aspect of this. In Matthew, chapter 18, it gives us a story, amen, uh, uh, of, of how these, these men received and how grace and mercy were perceived in their life. Matthew, chapter 18, verse 23, and I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. And I'll only just read the story real quick. It says, for this reason, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to bring his accounts up to date with the servants who had borrowed money from him. This is Jesus telling this story. The kingdom of heaven is like this king. Verse 24 says, in the process, one of the debtors was brought in who owed him millions of dollars. He couldn't pay. So the king ordered that he, his wife, his children, and everything he had be sold to pay the debt. Some might say that's a pretty mean king, but the reality is that's justice. That's what was rightfully due. This man owed a debt. It was due, and he could not pay it. And so justice says, well, you got to pay the debt, right? And so you've got to do what you've got to do to pay the debt. You're going to have to sell everything you've got. You're going to have to work until the, the debt is paid off. Nobody made you take this debt. You asked for it. You borrowed the money. You made the promise that you would give it back. Anybody ever have some debts that you had trouble paying? Anybody? Come on. The man decided to call in on, on some things that you owed. And, and, and while you may have, you know, you, you, sometimes people act like you got a right not to pay. Today, they, man, shoot. Uh, there's this commercial on that drives me crazy. They talk about don't let the debtors think that you have to pay them the full thing. I'm like, w w didn't you borrow the, the full thing? Why would you not? have to pay the full thing. The just thing is you borrowed it, you asked for it, you spent it, you got to pay it back. Amen? Come on, somebody say amen. And so the king was exercising his right based on their agreement. He didn't make that man take that money. That man took it. He expected he was going to be able to pay it, but now he can't. And so what's he doing? He's looking for mercy. Verse 26, but the man fell down before the king and begged him, Oh, sir, be patient with me and I will pay it all. Then the king was filled with pity for him and he released him and forgave his debt. Let me say that again. He released him and, there's an and, everybody say and, and he forgave his debt. Not only did he release him from going to jail, not only did he release him from selling his, his everything he had, and not only did he release him from selling his wife mm, and his children, which he just fully deserved, not only did he release him from that, he, 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 he released him and he said he forgave the debt. Here you see mercy 
and grace. You see, mercy would have said, okay, okay, you're due to pay me right now. The man was asking just for time. He didn't ask him to pay it off. He asked him, give me time. I'm, gonna, I'm good for it. I'm going to pay it all off. I haven't forgotten. And mercy would have said, okay, right now is due. Right now you owe me. Right now I can justly take everything you have. But mercy says, I'm going to give you time. I'm, 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 I'm going to give you some more time. Mercy says, I'm not going to put the punishment on you that you deserve right now. And so I'm, I'm going to instead give you, allow you more time to execute what it is that you were supposed to do. But here comes grace on top of that. The, the grace is in the end. Because not only did he, did he stall him on what he owed him, he, re, he released him and he forgave the debt. Forgiving the debt is grace because there's no way he, he earned to get that million dollars taken off of his, his, his role. He didn't do anything to earn. If anything, he deserved the rest. He was on his way to jail. And the man not only gave him more time to pay the debt, but he wiped the debt away. Come on, how many of y'all like to see a million dollar debt wiped off? Think about where this man went from. He went from on his way to jail to being a million dollars richer. Because he had a million dollars invested somewhere that he no longer had to pay back. The extreme of this blessing was he went all the way from on his way into the poorhouse into having a million dollars in his pocket. Come on, Lord have mercy. That is mercy with grace. That's how God does to us. Amen. He gives us both mercy and grace. But now I want you to pick up the story in verse 28. It says, but when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owned him a, a, a few thousand dollars. Now he owed a million dollars, but he goes to this man who owes him a few thousand dollars. He, he grabbed him by the throat and demanded instant payment for his thousand dollars. His fellow servant fell down before him and begged for a little more time. I just need a little bit more time. Be patient and I will pay it. He pleaded you. Just show me just the mercy part and I, and I just give me more time. Verse 30 says, but his, but his creditor uh, would not wait. He had the man arrested, just fully so, and jailed until the debt could be paid in full. How are you going to pay a debt in jail? How are you going to work off a debt in jail? Now, verse 31 says, when some of the other servants saw this, they were upset. They went to the king and told him what had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, you evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had with you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison until he had paid every penny. Hmm story here shows us the extremity of God's caring for us, full dimension love where he get, goes from mercy all the way to grace. But then we see this man here, this, this same man that owed uh, millions to the king has somebody who owes him thousands. It's a, a far less significant debt that he has with this other man and think about it he had just made a million dollars so he could have easily taken out of his million that he just made and said you know what I don't really need this thousand back now I would have needed it to pay the million but now I you know I, I'm gonna I'm let you go because somebody's been good to me I'm gonna be good to you it was a far less significant debt but yet he would not forgive I want you to understand that there are times when often we don't apply the same kindness to others that we desire for ourselves. Hmm. Think about all that God has done for us and the grace that is in our lives and the mercy that he has shown us, but we tend to see others in a different perspective than we see ourselves. Many times we're just like that man after God has done so much for us, expressed so much for us, then we turn around and look at somebody else and we can't show the same kind of mercy a grace to somebody owing us hundreds of thousands. And it's not just a matter of money. Sometimes it's just a matter of condition. When you think about the condition that God has brought you from to where he's brought you through, and then you look around and you see somebody else in a condition and you got something to say about it. Come on, somebody. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. Jesus spoke to his disciples in New Living Translation. He said, why worry about the speck in your friend's eye when you got a log in your own? 
Amen. We, we, he, this man didn't realize. He, had, he didn't really comprehend. He didn't, didn't appreciate how truly favored he had been. And so when he comes to somebody else, he can't see, amen, just what a condition he was in because he had a million dollar debt to pay and couldn't pay it. And here's this young, this other man that's with him, amen, and he has just a little something to him and, and, and he sees, and all oh, you got problems, you got issues. You, y'all people know, need to learn how to pay your stuff off. You need to learn how to do right. You need to learn how to live right. Why are you always messing up? I can't believe these people are always doing something. They lying about me, amen. They, they doing this about me. They got this going on. Many times we don't see others the way we see ourselves. We want other people's help. But we don't necessarily want to help somebody else. Many times we compare ourselves versus others different uh, instead of uh, instead of our own issues. We, we look at other people and compare ourselves to to what we see in them and, and look past our own stuff. Hmm. Many people are, are judgmental of others because what they see in this person, they they don't they always late. They all you don't know the stuff they're going through to get here. Amen. They they always got a problem. They what's wrong with them? They put some good clothes on, some decent clothes on. Why are they always in a mess? Something always going on in their life. They got so much drama. You forgot about mm, what you left alone or what you moved around or what you had to come out of. You forgot about what the Lord took you out of. And now you're talking about somebody else and seeing a problem in somebody else's life. Amen. James chapter one, verse 23 and 24 talks about looking into a mirror or a glass it says that for you, you listen to the word and don't obey. He says it's like a glancing. It's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself walk away. Forget what you look like. It's exactly what this man did. He just came out of the king's court <laughs> knowing he looked like he was on his way to jail. And before he turned around good and saw this other man, all of a sudden he's a judge. Did you just forget that you were the one that just came out the courthouse? Did you just forget that you were the one that was just on your way to jail? Did we just forget that we were the ones that were on our way to hell? Did we forget how God had to rescue us? How the immortal God had to wrap himself in flesh and come down here just because you couldn't do what you needed to do? Amen. God looked out for our failures, but yet we, we, can't, comp we can't have mercy and grace for the favor for those that are around us. We oftentimes see other people's sins more significant than ours. You find the cheater talking about the liar. You find the liar talking about the stealer. Yeah, but I would never do that. I would never reach to that. I would never go to that level. I, mm, you never see me. Mm -mm. We always want to compare ourselves. Instead of looking in that, that mirror, and seeing what we really are, we always want to compare to somebody else. What you look like today. Mm -mm -mm. What they look like today. And in the church, in, in, in specifically, we have a, a list of taboo sins. We got a sin taboo list. The list that, oh, I would never, hmm. Some sins we kind of let go. A lot of churches, they don't talk as much about, you know, the things going on behind closed doors with this one and that one. But when that sister comes in, when that brother comes in, oh, Lord, have mercy. We got issues with them. Some sins are more visible than others. And so we, we, we kind of pounce on those things. But yet we forget the lies that are down in the depths of our heart. The lie you just told before you came to church. Lord, have mercy. And we come in praising God and looking good and glorifying and condemning somebody else. Am I telling the truth? <laughs> see other people's sins is more significant than our own. And after the million dollar mercy and grace that God has given us, I mean full dimension, the depth, the breadth, the width, the height of what God has done for us. When we truly realize the million dollar blessing that God has in our lives, how is it that we cannot show mercy and grace towards someone who's going through something different than what we are. How can we condemn others? How can we find fault in others? Listen, if God forgave them, why can't we? If he forgives us, we got to forgive others. I never said this was a shouting message today, y'all. But when we understand the full dimension of God's love and grace in our lives, we have to learn how 
to not condemn, but learn how to love. I'm going to just be straight with you. Sometimes we're just too judgmental. The amazing thing about Jesus was that where he could have judged so many people that he was around, instead of judging them out of the kingdom, he loved them into the kingdom. We talked on last week about how Jesus, the Bible says that he ate with sinners and publicans. He ate with tax collectors, people that everybody else despised. Everybody else condemned them, said, oh, don't spend no time with them. But he loved them into the kingdom. He loved them out of their sins. He loved them out of their failures. He went to that woman that was the adulterous woman. And, and, and in the midst of that, he said, let he who has sin cast the first stone. He wasn't judging her. But he loved her back into doing the right thing the right way. That's what God gives to us. And that's what we should gather from what God did for us. Listen, if you don't have any other reason to love somebody else and forgive somebody else and have mercy towards someone else, the one reason you do have is because God did it for you before you had to do it for anybody else. He showed us how to do it. He showed us what love was all about. He showed us how to forgive. That's the power of understanding the full dimension of God's love towards us. What manner of love is this? He doesn't just love us because we're good. He doesn't just love us because we come to church. He doesn't just love us because we behave right and act right and always do the right thing. Because grace goes beyond what you did. Mercy is for what you messed up. But how many of you realize, even if you didn't mess up anything, grace has nothing to do with what you did? It's not because you've been behaved today. Not because you've been a good boy. You've been a good girl. Grace is because God shows unmerited favor towards your life. And thank God for his grace. Somebody ought to thank God for his grace right now. <laughs> God loved us. We got to learn how to turn on the love towards somebody else. Amen? Amen. There are some people out there in and around us that need to be loved into salvation. They need to be loved into the right thing. And I'm not saying that we all of a sudden d determine and dictate that, you know, everything that they're doing is right. I love my children, even when they ain't right. And God knows there's times when they are not right. <laughs> amen 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 trust me believe you me <laughs> but it doesn't stop me from loving them because that's my child that's my child God gave me that child and even when they make dumb mistakes <laughs> stupid decisions do things they're not supposed to do that's still my child are y'all with me today oh the love of God towards us grace and the mercy of God that keeps us and holds on to us and forgives us over and over again and gives us not what we deserve, but gives us something far beyond what we could ever earn. That's the goodness of God. And if, if God can love us, certainly we can love one another. Amen. Love God, just the dimensions, it just keeps growing. It keeps expanding. It keeps showing God, you know, what it really is. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I watched a, a program near the Easter holidays, and it was about, it was actually one of these uh, movies that we're showing to the teenagers. And when I watched that program and I saw, you know, the core of what they were about, it really moved me because it wasn't about being the best preacher. It wasn't about being the greatest orator. It wasn't about being able to stand in front of crowds and be so powerfully persuasive. The thing that drew the crowds was the fact that they were determined that regardless of what others did to them and regardless of what happened to them, they were going to keep on loving. And I love the way it showed it because it showed reality. Sometimes it hurt. Sometimes people were mad. And it's an interesting thing. We think about the apostles as being so pious and they could never be touched and so determined. Well, it shows some of the apostles mad. <laughs> they got issues. Talking about how they felt about Saul. Saul had killed many of their friends. And here comes Saul. And you read the Bible. It does show you this. Saul had killed so many of them trying to stop the movement. 
And then all of a sudden Saul flips and decides, hey, it's okay now. I'm one of y'all. I'm saved now. Come on, greet me. Welcome me, brothers. Here I am. And some of them weren't feeling it. Any of y'all know what I'm talking about? Some of them weren't feeling it. You killed one of my best friends. You drag people out on the streets. You put people in jail. You beat them till there was nothing left on their back. Now you're supposed to be my brother. I'm talking to real, real now. But they had to make a choice in the midst of that, the persecutions, the, the Roman soldiers, the Sanhedrins, everybody coming against them. They had to make a choice to expound out with love. And it was the love that they expressed that drew people in by the hundreds and by the thousands from everywhere because there was something unique about the fact that they kept loving regardless of what was going on around them. Saints of God, so many times we get into the format of church. We get into the format of services and worship service and sing three songs and have a sermon and come in on Wednesday and do this and get dressed and be on time and be at your post and be the usher and be the sound crew. And what it's really about is about the love of God. Love.